Hey everyone, my name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to another video. My name is Boom Shaka, it's because Boom was a nickname. A lot of people have been asking me uh, why Boom Shaka. Shaka is actually my real name. I'm from India originally. Uh, now I live in Toronto, Canada, and obviously I go back and forth between Chiang Mai and Toronto. I wanted to talk to you guys today about INFJs as writers or as creative people. I am a writer myself. I write books, uh, novels, sci-fi. And I publish them on Kindle. I also have a blog post, uh, a blog. Um, I also do podcasts and these YouTube videos, right? So I'm very creative and I do a lot of creative work in general. But I've noticed that um, there's a lot of people who are INFJs who are obviously very observant of the world. We are always constantly observing the world. How does it work? What's going on with it? Why, does it, why do people do things this way? We're always constantly asking questions, constantly trying to learn more about this world, constantly trying to learn about our place in the world. So we ask questions, we go internally, you know, we ask ourselves questions, we ask the world questions, We're constantly doing all this kind of stuff, right? <clears throat> but what happens with that is that we also have this idealistic streak in us, and not only that, we're also perfectionist. Um, so for a creative person, those are the two things that actually kill them as creative beings. Creative beings cannot be perfectionists. They cannot be perfectionists because if you're a perfectionist, you're going to wait until your work is perfect before putting it out in the world. And it's never going to be perfect because it'll never reach that point where you're satisfied with it as a perfectionist. And so you're never going to put any work out in the world. And for a creative person, the main thing that they need to do in order to be creative and highly creative and, and sustain it is to be a shipper. They need to ship their stuff out, which is complete it, ship it, repeat. Complete it, ship it, repeat. Most people get stuck at the stage of actually writing or actually painting or whatever it might be. They don't actually finish anything. And if they do finish, they don't ship because they're afraid of criticism. And INFJs are extremely afraid of criticism. So as a creative person, what I've had to do is to teach myself that rejection, criticism, any kind of negativity is actually a good thing. It means that I'm actually doing my job right. The more negativity, the more trolls I get, the more negative criticism I get, it means that I'm actually putting a lot of stuff out there. Because when I put a lot of stuff out there, a lot of this kind of stuff will come back at me. Not only that, but obviously also positive feedback. But as INFJs only focus on negativity, you always just get bogged down by, oh my god, what if someone says something negative about it? I'm never going to put anything out there again. Kind of thing. So I've had to teach myself to say, okay, if someone says then something negative about you, it's actually a good thing. It means that you're doing it right, you're putting a lot of stuff out there. And so I constantly am shipping and shipping and shipping. I write thousands of words every single day and I ship it and I'm constantly in that mode of creation, creation, creation. The same thing with idealism. Idealism says that there is one thing, there's one idealistic path and that is all. And if you're not on that path, then you're not on a path at all, right? And INFJs are always like that. It's like if you're not doing things a certain way, which is the right way, then every other way is the wrong way which is not right, obviously. There's a billion ways of doing what you're doing, right? And that's, again, another thing that I had to learn as an INFJ creative is that I had to learn that there is no one way for me to get to the end goal, which is be more creative. I can take this path here, I can take that path there, I can take that path, that path, a billion pathways are constantly present to me in every moment for me to be creative. I don't have to take a specific pathway. I can take any pathway that comes at me. But... Eventually, I have to sit down and choose a path to go on that path for a while to see how it goes, how it feels, and if it works for me or not. What happens is that INFJs get stuck in indecisiveness. We are very indecisive because there's so much that we want to do, so much that we want to produce, so much that we want to create, like most people, but we get stuck in indecisiveness. So what we need to learn is to take and choose a path and just take that path and not worry about where the end result is going to be. Because you have no idea what the end result is going to be anyways, no matter what you do. If you're creative or non-creative, you don't know what's going to happen. You might die tomorrow, right? So you cannot be worried about tomorrow, day after tomorrow. All you can worry about is this present moment right now as we are, and that's all. What are you doing in the present moment to make your dream come true? What are you doing, and how can you do more of that? That's all you need to worry about. So there is no ideal path. There is no idealism. It's not black and white. It's always shades of gray. 
And we can live in shades of gray in a lot of different ways as INFJs, but for some reason when it comes down to our life purpose, we get really bogged down by, oh, it has to be the right way. If it's not the right way, then I'm not going to do it. It has to be that perfect thing. If it's not that perfect thing, I'm not going to do anything at all. That's not the way to do it, right? Otherwise, you're going to uh, get to the end of your life and not have done anything that you really cared about because it wasn't ideal or it wasn't perfect. It's not going to be ideal or perfect. We don't live in that kind of world. We don't live in a world where it's perfect or ideal. We live in a world where we have to keep on going, striving forward, and as things happen, we tweak and we're flexible and adaptable and we go along with the flow. That's another thing as an INFJ we have to learn. We have to train ourselves on it because it does not come with our personality. It's not actually, it doesn't jive with our personality. But once you learn it, we can be a really great creative person. J.K. Rowling is actually an INFJ. I'm pretty sure she's an INFJ. Anyways, so she's an INFJ and she created so many beautiful bodies of work. Like she is a great prolific writer and she did it, but I'm sure she was dealing with the traumas of perfectionism and idealism and all that stuff as most INFJs do. And if you want to be a creative person, and I, I absolutely recommend that you do something creative in your life because every person on this planet is creative, but also INFJs are great individuals for creativity because we're always observing the world and we're able to see the world as it is rather than what we prefer it to be. And so we're actually really good at portraying the world in writing or in videos or whatever it might be. It's actually a really good format for us to do, uh, to be creative. Actually, INFJs are really, a lot of times they're recommended to be writers, authors, uh, motivational speakers, things like that, because we're able to portray things in such a manner that is really clear and perceptive to the universe. So it is actually good for us to do that. We should be doing that. But what we end up doing is living, admiring ourselves in perfectionism and idealism and not actually getting you know, any kind of real creative work done. I go to so many meetings with uh, writers and this is, I don't think it's just an INFJ thing, it's a writer thing. We are afraid, so afraid, so, so, so afraid of criticism and feedback, negative feedback. Because we, we just believe that if someone says to us that we're not a good writer, that means we're not a good writer. Whereas to me now, I know that most people have no idea what the hell's going on in this world anyways. They don't know who they are. They don't know what this world is about. They don't know anything. And so if you're getting feedback from these individuals who themselves are clueless and you're letting them decide your fate in life, then I think that's a humongous mistake. It's like basically letting a child decide where you're going to go on vacation. Why give up your decision making to someone else who themselves does not know who they are? It doesn't make any sense. They don't know who you are. They don't know all the intricacies, all the details about who you are as a person and what you were thinking about when you created something. So how can they judge it? And if they judge it, it's their prerogative. They're allowed to judge it. It's their thinking. That's what people do. People judge things and they criticize things. But does it really mean that it's saying anything about you as an individual? No. I never take any criticism or feedback from people as a judgment of who I am because I know who I am. And whatever you say or whatever you don't say, it doesn't matter because I know who I am and I know what I'm here to do, which is write and create and be this person that I am and become more of who I am. And so it doesn't really matter if you tell me that you don't think that my writing's right or correct or nice or um, interesting because it doesn't matter. Because it's your opinion. It's not really that you are an expert or anything. If Anne Rand, who wrote The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, or one of the really good authors that I love, if she came and told me, uh, maybe you should improve on this and this and this, I'm like, obviously I'll go and do that. But if a random person on the street comes and tells me, you know, I don't really like what you did there. All right, that's fine. That's your opinion. It has nothing to do with me or my writing or my status as a writer or my future as a writer or the fact that I am a creative person. It has nothing to do with that. I, I always feel that a lot of the criticism that people kind of put out there, the negative criticism, actually comes from the fact that they're afraid to be creative themselves. And so that's a defensive mode for them because if they can put other people's creativity down, that means they become more creative themselves somehow. You know, It's like they're level, trying to level, level out the playing field. Also, they have resistance inside of them. A lot of criticism comes out from that. They're afraid 
Uh, they don't want other people to succeed in creativity because that means that they can do it as well, especially if the person's very similar to them. And so when people look at me and I'm not anything special, really, I'm so basic and I'm so just normal. If I can write and I can create stuff and I can do all of this, then you can do it, right? And that's what the problem is here, that they look at me and they don't see anything special and they say, oh, well, if she's not anything special and I'm the same as her, then I can do this as well. And that really puts a lot of strain and pressure on them because there's no more excuses, right? Or they can say, well, J.K. Rowling is a genius, so she can do that, but I can't do it. She's not a genius. She just sat down and wrote every single day. She had an idea in her head and she put it out into the world. That's what she did. That's how she did it. Even though she was poor and destitute, she didn't let that be an excuse for her. Whereas there are people who are extremely rich, who have enough money, who can actually give up their jobs and go and work and write and be creative, but they don't do it because they have created these barriers in their head. This video is already really long, so I'm going to talk a lot more about this in the future because I really want to talk a lot more about why writing is not as hard as people make it out to be. We want to put all this drama into our writing. We don't have to. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It's just writing. That's all we're doing. We're just putting down words on a piece of paper or on a laptop screen. Nothing dramatic about it. So I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope that I was able to connect all these different ideas for you. Again, my name is Boom Shaka, and if you guys want to join my team, you can go on to patreon.com slash boomshaka. I'll talk to you guys the next time around. Bye for now.